Bright Swan. Welcome to the Mysterious Domain Movie Palace Drive-In Theater Special. Before we begin, I want to give a shout out to people who bought me coffee. Crow's Mom and Kyle McDonald. So really, thank you so much. It's really uh, means a lot to me because I can't make any money off of Google ads or anything because I'm showing things that are not mine. They all have a copyright uh, issue. So I can't do that. I can't even put up my, my Story Hour t-shirts underneath, which I think a lot of you might like. Anyway, so thank you so much for buying me coffees. I really appreciate it, guys. So now we're ready for the main event at the Mysterious Domain Movie Palace Drive-In Theater Special. And this, in a way, is the perfect drive-in movie. It's black and white. It's from 1960. And of course, it stars Christopher Lee. This was going to be my alternative film if Whippin' the Body got taken down in May. But in a way, I'm kind of glad I that, well, I'm glad Whippin' the Body stayed up, but I'm also glad I have this for the, for the drive-in because, you know, it's one of those. It's called City of the Dead, or in the UK, it's called Horror Hotel. And in it, Christopher Lee, um, the reason I, it wasn't my first choice is because Christopher Lee in this film kind of plays his standard character of the teacher or the mentor or the wise old occult guy, you know. And for his birthday, I just wanted, I wanted to do something that was a little different. And that seemed to be well received. People seemed to really enjoy that uh, within the body one. So Christopher Lee's second birthday in, in June. Now, what is interesting the City of the Dead and one of my all-time favorites, The Haunting, were both made in 1960 in the same studio in Britain. And they're both American ghost stories made by British studios. So, so, and so they have that mixed cast and everything. And what I find really intriguing about that is they they have a similar look. I think maybe Horror Hotel or City of the Dead's a little grainier looking, but they both have this beautiful black and white. And people sometimes in the comments wonder why films in 1960s were made in black and white when they had color available. In fact, they have Technicolor. Well, for these kinds of films, black and white just creates the right atmosphere. For instance, in City of the Dead, you've got ghosts, and ghosts, to me, are pretty much black and white. And it also allows them to do so much with the fog machines, and the shadows, and the moonlight, and they get they just get to play more with the dark and light. And since a lot of these films are about good versus evil, and in the 1960s, in the good versus evil, good usually triumphs. And that kind of changes in the 70s, where so you begin to see evil triumphing. And anyway, maybe except for Rosemary's Baby, um, where evil kind of won in that one. And also, when you have a, an opulent setting, a, a house like in The Haunting, or a castle like in so many of these Italian Gothic films, when you look those locations up and see them in color, there's a lot of color and a lot of detail and so many ornaments and things. So if you were to film those in color, the actors would get swallowed up. I mean, they become like part of the wallpaper or maybe one of the statues. You wouldn't be able to tell the difference between the actors and the settings. And you know, the, the house is a character in the story and the house can start to dominate and the black and white film helps to let the characters stand out. It gives us a, a chance to focus on them while at the same time you see these, these beautiful uh, opulent surroundings. And nowhere have I seen this illustrated as beautifully as in the remake of The Haunting, you know, with Catherine Zeta-Jones and Owen Wilson and all that crowd. That, to me, that film was an abomination. The house was so over the top and it just took over everything. And 
there were a lot of problems with that film. I, I suppose there are some people that like it, but give me the old suggestive black and white shadows and lights, you know, give me that atmosphere any day over, you know, something that looks more realistic. So I see these films as having kind of a lot in common. My uh, version of The Haunting, which was one I saw as a kid and really haunted me. I mean, I looked everywhere for that book. I must have seen it on TV or something because my parents would never take us to see a movie like that. So we must have seen it on TV and I wanted to read the book because I was a big reader. I'm still a big reader. But our little uh, Podunk library didn't have it. And in fact, I couldn't find it. I don't think I actually found a copy of it until sometime like 1990 or something. What I had found was We've Always Lived in the Castle, which is one of my favorite books. It's the way Shirley Jackson writes, her, her voice. So City of the Dead. It also suits not just the drive-in, but the fact that Leicester Drive-In is in Massachusetts, which is where I grew up in Leicester, Massachusetts. And what's Massachusetts known for? Witches. And in this place called Whitewood, what they've done is in a kind of a funny way, they've evoked the old Puritan settlements in New England, especially in Massachusetts. And I, Having grown up with the, the Puritan energy all around, I developed a theory that a lot of the Puritans or the pilgrims who were fleeing Europe for religious freedom were actually witches. In fact, it's said that the original Collins family, uh, the Illuminati Collins family actually came to Maine and brought witchcraft with them to Maine, because that's an actual family. And that, to me, feeds into the whole drama that happened in Salem, Massachusetts, around the witch trials, because they did bring that in, and they might have disguised themselves as Puritans. Of course, what do, what do the witches want to do? They want to wear black. They want to be severe, right? And it just... I think they came in with the with the Puritans. So that also suits this film to be at the Leicester Drive-In, I want to say. Well, anyway, so The City of the Dead was made in 1960, like I said, in England. And it was directed by John Llewellyn Moxie. And, and I think his directing of this is, is beautiful. Of course, to me, if I'm going somewhere and I start to see a tremendous amount of eerie fog and run into Valentine Dial at the side of the road. I'm cutting out of there. I'm not going in, but if you wouldn't have a movie if she did that, right? Now it does start Christopher Lee as Alan Driscoll and he's a professor at a university and he entices one of his students, Nan Barlow. For you, those of you who've been living under a rock and don't know Christopher Lee, he had a long career playing Dracula for Hammer House of Horror. And he played Saruman in The Lord of the Rings. And his favorite film that he's ever done is The Wicker Man. And then he was uh, often with Peter Cushing, of course, that's kind of his Gemini sidekick. And he was in five Tim Burton films, and I kind of dug around a little bit, and some people volunteered information. So the only one of those, well, he was in The Corpse Bride, which I, I could watch again. And he was in Sleepy Hollow, which I love, which I haven't seen in a while, so I'll have to look it up again. And he was in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, which I'm not a fan of. And he was in Dark Shadows, which I'm, had so much potential, and they ruined it, as far as I'm concerned. Once they put the carpenters and stuff in, it was just, no. It wasn't the 70s, it was the 60s. There's a difference. And Alice in Wonderland, which I, which I like. I like the Alice film. Anyway, so he plays Alan, Alan Driscoll. And his, uh, his favorite student is called Nan Barlow, and she's played by Venetia Stevenson. And Venetia Stevenson 
interestingly enough, was married to Russ Tamblin, who was in The Haunting. So maybe they met at that studio or something. So she was born in England to, um, to a film director called Robert Stevenson. And her mother was an actress, Anna Lee. And they moved to Hollywood when she was born, just after she was born. So her father could work with David O. Selznick. So she's kind of in the Hollywood aristocracy from the start. Now, she is a very beautiful blonde and Hedda Hopper named her the top movie newcomer of 1957 alongside Jane Mansfield. She said that Venetia Stevenson, though, at 18, was the most purely beautiful girl of all the new crop of stars. Yeah, and she's kind of has, you know, the character she plays, Nan Barlow, has the disease of many women in horror films, which is rabid curiosity. It's it's all about Bluebeard. It's all about, don't look in that room. And like the guy at the gas station says, stay away from Whitewood. Don't go to Whitewood. You know? It's always the same story. In some cases, it's the man that does it. The woman's intuition is firing off and saying, don't, 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 like in um, Mephisto Walls, where she keeps warning him and he just thinks she's being crabby. You know, never ends well. There's one American actress in this one called Betta St. John. And Betta St. John, to me, looks like Janet Lee, which I don't think is an accident that they took a Janet Lee looking actress and put her in there and they did the hair and the clay. She just looks like Janet Lee. So she did a lot of musicals on Broadway, but she was also a, a child actress and she began her career with um, Shirley Temple, who made her film debut at 10 years old. So it's kind of interesting to me that, you know, I see her in City of the Dead and I feel like I've never seen her before, but she was in it like everything. Now, the nemesis of Alan Driscoll is Dick Barlow, who is Nan's father. And he's also a professor at this college. And you know what's funny? All these British actors, because they're playing New England characters, they don't have to work real hard on their accent because there's still a lot of residue of the old British accent in the New England accents. So I, I don't think Christopher Lee even bothered to sound American. And this guy, the actor who plays uh, Dick Barlow is called Dennis Lotus. And, you know, he, he kind of, you know, he, draw, he straddles the line very nicely. And he was another South African performer, an entertainer, a singer, kind of a crooner like Frank Sinatra and Matt Al Martino and all those guys from the from the 50s. He was very popular doing that. He was said to have a sophisticated style that was quite attractive to the female population. So I guess he did quite well for himself. Now we have an actor who is also in The Haunting as the gatekeeper and in City of the Dead as Jethro Keen, and this is the great Valentine Dial. He's also in briefly, very briefly, in um, The Queen of Spades, which I tried to have on here, which got taken down, as the messenger for the Count Saint Germain. And you don't see his face, but that voice is unmistakable. He was known as the Man in Black, one of the many, right? Men in Black. They should do a Men in Black uh, film where they, they have Valentine Dial and Johnny Cash and, I don't know, the Blues Brothers. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, just uh, do, a, do a documentary on the Men in Black. Now, the basic star of this one is Patricia Jessel. Of course, her name reminds me of Turn of the Screw, you know, Mrs. Miss Jessel, who's a ghost. And in this one, she plays a witch, Elizabeth Selwyn, which is a great name. I love that name, Elizabeth Selwyn. You know, that just sounds like a witch. It sounds like an early American Puritan woman from 160 something. My family came to North America in 1603 and 
1606. So I really know what I'm talking about. Anyway, so she also was born in Hong Kong. She did a lot of stage acting and sadly she died of a heart attack at the age of 47, which is, so then we have, we have Nan's boyfriend, Bill Maitland. He's played by Tom Naylor and I couldn't find out anything about him. I think he was a footballer or something that got kind of talked into doing this role because he's so kind of, you know, he's such a, he's British, but he gives that all American look of the time, you know? So that's our cast. So uh, welcome to the drive-in. You know, you can watch this while you're sitting in your car. You can watch it. Pretending you're sitting in your car, you can watch it outside, which is where the drive-in is. In my drive-in where I grew up was in the middle of the woods. So, just like most of these places. Anyway, take care and have a wonderful evening watching City of the Dead or Horror Hotel. And you can play crickets in the background. Bye-bye. <laughs>
help her own son. Help her. Elizabeth Selwyn. On this third day of March, in the year of our Lord, 1692, we, the people of Whitewood, Massachusetts, condemn thee as a witch. May the flames cleanse thy soul of its evil, of its lust for blood, but may they bring about the death of Abigail Adams. of black mass for all eternity shall i sacrifice unto thee i give thee my soul take me into thy service always listen to my servant grant her this pact for all eternity and i with her and if we fail thee but once you may do with our souls what you will make this city an example of thy vengeance curse it it for all eternity. And let curse. me be the instrument of thy curse. Hear me, O Lucifer. Hear me. She's making a curse. Elizabeth Selwyn in 1692. Though, as I've said, little is known today of the actual practice of witchcraft in 17th century New England, superstition, fear, and jealousy drove the Puritans to accuse their friends and relatives of consorting with the devil. Raiding around huge bonfires, repeating vindictive chants, they consigned the poor creatures to the flames. The tortured souls cried out in agony as the flames mounted higher and higher. Burn, witch, burn, witch, burn, burn, burn. Dig that crazy beat. Shh. That will be all for today. Tomorrow will be my concluding lecture on the history of witchcraft in 17th century New England. I shall bring along some illustrations which I'm sure will interest you all. I'll bring the matches. <laughs> Maitland! Since you chose to attend these lectures, I had hoped that it was in a spirit of scientific curiosity about the subject. That'll be all. Bill, how could you? He takes it all so darn seriously. He's got you all hypnotized. Oh, Miss Barlow. Yes, Professor. Can I see you for a moment, please? Yes. What about our date? I'll Look, um, I'll wait for you outside. Huh? Yes, Professor. Rather a difficult young man, that. That you are more of an attraction to him than my poor efforts. However, I've been reading through your papers, Miss Barlow. They show a very sound appreciation of the subject. I want to go to New England to do my senior paper. Mm -hmm. They're really quite good, you know. Well, I'm not quite satisfied. I feel I need some first hand research. I want to get the atmosphere, find out how widespread witchcraft really was, what the witches were really like. Well, that might take a little time, you know. Well, I have the time. My brother and I were going to spend our vacation with our cousins. What I'd really like to do is to get a room in the smallest, oldest town in New England I can find. Check through all the town hall records, recheck the libraries, talk to the Puritan descendants, make a really thorough investigation. Your brother is a professor of science, Miss Barlow. I hardly think he'd be very interested in the history of witchcraft. 
That I'd go alone. You don't think he'd object to that? You leave Richard to me. He's picking me up here for lunch. Hello, Bill. Professor Barlow. Nan here? Yeah, she's in there with him. Well, I don't like her getting mixed up in this witchcraft business. Why not? It's only part of a history course. I want to find out Professor Barlow. Yeah? Before you go in there, could, could I have a word with you? Oh, sure. Well, it's about Nan and me. Oh. If you're really serious about this, I happen to know of a town in New England. As a matter of fact, it's the identical place where the events occurred that I mentioned in today's lecture, Whitewood. It's uh, quite a small place. It's a little bit up the beaten track, so maybe these directions will help you. Thank you. I think you might very well find what you're looking for there. I happen to know the woman who owns the inn in Whitewood. Her name is Newless, Mrs. Newless. So you just tell her I sent you. Raven's Inn, Whitewood. What's Whitewood? Now, Dick, don't be too upset, but uh, I'm going to change my plans for the vacation. Change your plans? Yes. Going to a place called Whitewood for a week or so to do some research. Who are you? What about Cousin Sue? Well, she's expecting you for a birthday party on the 17th. She'll never forget I can you. still easily make it by then. This is important. My term paper's got to be good. It could mean a scholarship. Man, I've made all the arrangements. Come on, Dick. You'll have a good time without me. My mind's made up. I'm going to Whitewood. But surely any good encyclopedia will give you all the nonsense you want to know about witchcraft? Witchcraft is not nonsense, Barlow. I'm sorry, Driscoll. Witchcraft, black magic sorcery. To me, it's nothing but fairy tale mumbo jumbo. I'm a scientist, Driscoll. I believe what I can see, what I can feel and touch. The basis of fairy tales is reality. The basis of reality is fairy tales. Well, As a scientist, you should be familiar with that quotation. Yeah, well, I don't believe that somebody in Chicago can die of a heart attack because some woman in New Orleans sticks a pin in a wax doll. Maybe you don't. The practitioners of voodoo will claim otherwise. Dick, you're just being difficult. No. When I look into a microscope, Driscoll, I see bacteria swimming, fighting, existing. That's real. These witches, they were persecuted and burnt in the 17th century were real, too, but they weren't witches. They were pitiful human beings, victims of hysteria. There are many eminent scholars who have documentary proof of the actual practice of witchcraft. Yeah, but how effective was this practice? Did any of these eminent scholars ever meet a real practicing witch? Did you ever meet a witch, Driscoll? Perhaps. Oh, come on, you're an historian. No witch ever survived the burning at the stake for all that pact with the devil. In 1692, Elizabeth Selwyn went to the stake. She was buried in a churchyard in New England. And yet three years later... Yeah. Three years later, a new wave of blood sacrifices broke out in the village that had condemned her. The daughters of the elders who had condemned her were themselves found murdered with every last drop of blood drained from their bodies. And afterwards, People came forward to testify that they had actually seen Elizabeth Selwyn. Oh, stop. This would be more effective at midnight with howling winds and crashing thunder, and even then it wouldn't frighten anyone. Dick, I'm sorry, Professor Driscoll. That's all right, Miss Barlow. You won't be the first person to have scoffed at the subject. Honey, when you get to, um, where is it? Whitewood. Ah, yes, Whitewood. Well, send me a picture postcard of a witch. If possible, autographed. Now, uh, let's have some lunch, eh? I'm sorry, I have a date. Nan, darling, I still don't see why you have to go off to this Whitewood place. Now, I thought we were going to have some time together during this vacation. You know I want to be with you. It's just this is important. Look, what the heck can you find that hasn't been found before? I don't know. It's just that maybe, hidden in some attic or buried in some old antique shop, there's something that might give a whole new outlook to the Oh, subject. what new outlook can there be? You're a science student, honey. You know how important research is. But this isn't about anything real. This is just superstitious people burning silly old women. But suppose the women weren't silly. Suppose they really had a pact with the devil. A pact that could have supernatural power. Oh, come on. What kind of power? I don't know. Oh, look, 
It's no use, Bill. We've both tried our hardest to talk her out of going. Do you really think she will find anything worthwhile? Well, I think we have to respect her desire to find something new, even if we, even if we don't agree with the subject. Agree with it? I've never heard so much nonsense as that guy Driscoll talks in all my life. Well, here I am, all packed. Oh, I suppose there's nothing I can say will stop you from going, huh? Yeah, well, I'll, uh, I'll put this in the car. I still hoped you'd change your mind, Nan. Don't worry, darling. I'll be back as quick as I can, and I'll write. Well, don't forget me altogether, huh? I won't. Give Sue my love, and don't forget we have a date at our party. Bye, darling. Excuse me, can you help me? I seem to be lost. Sure, if I can. I'm looking for the Wamport Road. Wamport Road? Hardly anyone uses that anymore. Well, my friend gave me the directions. Uh, take Road 28A, turn onto the Wamport Road, bear left at the fork through to Whitewood. Whitewood? Am I that far away? No, ma'am, not far. Not many God-fearing folks visit Whitewood nowadays. If I were you, I'd... Uh, if, if you'll excuse me, I'm in a hurry. Which way is it? Well, follow this road about two miles. You come to a fourth. There'll be a sign, Wamport Road. Turn left, keep straight. There'll be Whitewood. Thank you very much. Wamport Road? Wamport Road, yes. Oh, good. I was afraid I missed it. Is it uh, Whitewood you seek? Yes. I, too. Uh, would I be imposing if... No, of course not. Get in. Thank you. I think the Highway Commission would do something about these roads. Watch out. Here comes another bump. What is your mission in Whitewood? Mission? Well, I'm going there to do some research on witchcraft. Professor Driscoll gave us some very interesting lectures on the subject. And I'm going there to get some original source material. Do you know Whitewood? I've known it for many years. Do you go there often? Fairly often. Oh, then you must know the Raven's Inn. I shall be resting there. Oh, so shall I. Oh, my name's Nan Barlow. My name's Jethro Keane. Pleased to meet you. Pleased to meet you. Just like a picture out of a history book. I feel as though I were in the 17th century. Why hasn't Whitewood been written about? Well, it's off a beaten path. Few tourists come here. For Whitewood, time stands still. Look at that church. Must have been beautiful. What a shame they let it get so run down. Straight on? Yes, follow the road around. Ah, oh, there it is. What a lovely old building. 17th century, at least. How picturesque can you get? Right by the graveyard. Yes, it has not been used for more than 200 years. Any witches buried there? There are indeed. All in a section of unconsecrated ground. Spooky, isn't it? Well, keep your fingers crossed for me, Mr. Keene. 
I hope Mrs. Millis has that room. I didn't hear you come in. Are you Mrs. Newless? Mm. Oh, uh, I'm Nan Barlow. I was told I might find a room here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was recommended by a friend of mine, Professor Driscoll. Perhaps you know him. That will be all, Lottie. Sorry to keep you waiting. Unfortunately, Lottie cannot talk. I've often told her not to answer the bell. Oh, poor thing. Then you're Mrs. Newless. I am. May I help you? Yes, I'd like to have a room here for two weeks. The hotel is quite full. Oh, the guests are never about at this time of the day. Well, I'm a student of Professor Driscoll's. He told me if I mentioned his name, I'd have no trouble. Well, there is a room I could let you have. It's just off the lobby. Oh, thank you. Oh, Mrs. Newless, that plaque... Is it true that Elizabeth Selwyn was really burnt here for being a witch? She was. And do you believe she was a witch? Come along. I'll show you to your room. I hope you will be comfortable. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is a nice room. The previous occupants have always found it most agreeable. Well, if there's anything you should need, just ring the bell for me at the desk. Thank you. so many months. I have counted the days to this holiday. So have the others. It wasn't easy for some of my guests to get here. Many had to travel vast distances. I was lucky. The last few miles were enchanting. Miss Barlow is very good company. You must be tired, Jethro. Your room is ready. And the festivities. I am prepared. Oh, Mrs. Newless, I thought I'd have a short look around town. I won't be gone long. I think you'll find the church interesting. Unfortunately, it no longer has a congregation. He will be pleased. Thank you. 
I'm told this was once a house of worship. It is still a house of worship. I am the reverend of this church. As long as the breath of life is within me, this house shall remain God's house. Must have been a beautiful building. <laughs> me, it is still beautiful. I'm sorry. What a shame the people have let it fall into such a state. Strangers rarely come to Whitewood. Who are you? I'm Nan Barlow. I'm staying at the Raven's Inn. Why I... have you come to Whitewood? Well, because I'm interested in witchcraft. Young woman, leave Whitewood. Leave Whitewood tonight. For 300 years, the devil has hovered over this city, made it his own. The people in it are his. Evil has triumphed over good here. Look at my church. I have no parish. No one worships here. His is the power. What power? Leave Whitewood. Leave Whitewood tonight. I beg of you. What power? Leave before it is too late. <laughs> Excuse the mess, we haven't been open long. You have some very interesting things here. Yes, they, they belong to my grandmother. When she died, I came back to sort things out. Oh, I'm sorry. Then you don't live here? No, my family lived here for generations, but I've just been back a few weeks. Would you like to have a look around? Thank you. Oh, I didn't mean to frighten you when I came in. It's just that all the people I've met here have acted like I'm a person from another world. They don't see many strangers here. And I had the most, well, unusual experience with the Reverend. He barred my way from the church. And he talked to me about a curse. And he warned me to leave Whitewood. Can you explain that? No, I can't. Does he often act that way? He's my grandfather. Oh, I, I'm sorry. Oh, it's all right. It's happened before with strangers. Oh, the lack of parishioners and loss of his sight has made him bitter and suspicious. I'm afraid what with him and the town, I, I was very scared. When I saw your lights, I made a dash for them. I'm glad you did. Um, do you have any books or pamphlets on witchcraft? You do, don't you? A friend of mine... Well, we, we have a collection gathering dust, but why on earth would you be interested in... Oh, I'm sorry, it's really none of my business. Oh, no, that's all right. I'm studying it in college, and I've come here to write my term paper. Well, just wait. I'll see what I can find. That's Elizabeth Selwyn, burned as a witch, March 3rd, 1692. Yes, I know. I saw the plaque in the lobby of the hotel. You're staying at the Raven's Inn? Yes. It was recommended to me by a friend of mine, Professor Driscoll. Alan Driscoll? Yes, do you know him? No, but my grandfather speaks of him. His family come from here. Oh, I didn't know that. Here, I think this will do for a start. What a lovely locket. May I see it? I believe it's quite old. It is. You're very lucky. I'm even more lucky to have found this. A treatise on devil worship in New England. This must be a very rare book. I'm afraid I couldn't afford to buy it. You can borrow it, if you like. Oh, could I? That would be wonderful. I promise I'll bring it back in a few days. You're very welcome, Miss... Uh... Barlow. Nan Barlow. Nan Barlow. Thank you very much. Good night. Good night.
Yes, Miss Barlow? I, I've heard some strange noises in my room. Oh, possibly the water in the pipes. This is a very old inn. No, it seemed to be coming from the cellar underneath. I hardly think so, Miss Barlow. The cellars do not extend beneath your room. But then why is there a trap door in the floor? The ground was filled in many years ago to strengthen the foundations of the building. But I'm sure well, I... if you insist, I will come and see. I don't hear anything. Well, just a few minutes ago. Never mind, I'm sorry. You're welcome. But you can see for yourself there is no ring in the trapdoor because there is no reason to lift it. There is nothing underneath but earth. <laughs> More towels. I haven't used mine. They're quite clean. Lottie, I've told you before not to bother the guests. Miss Barlow, I thought you might care to join the others. I will as soon as I finish my notes. I'll put some clothes on and join them. Treatise on Devil Worship in New England. Well, do you find this interesting? Why, it's fascinating. The things I've learnt. I bet you don't know the half of it. And you live right here on a spot where the witches were actually burnt. Listen to this. On Candlemas Eve, February 1st, in the year 1692, a coven of witches, a coven that's 13, some men, some women, whose power came from the devil, gathered beneath the Raven's Inn to perform a black mass in the honor of Lucifer. The witch, Elizabeth Selwyn, later to be burnt at the stake, marked a young girl for sacrifice by obtaining an object of value belonging to her with which to call her, and leaving in its place a dead bird and a sprig of woodbine. The witches sacrificed her on the altar and drank her blood at the hour of thirteen. What's the hour of thirteen? Well, personally, I have never heard a clock strike more than twelve. Now, how about joining the dancing? In a little while, I promise. Oh, by the way, I seem to have misplaced my locket. I remember having it in my room, and now it's disappeared. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I'll ask Lottie. Well, I'm, I'm not saying it was stolen. It's just I remember having it on the dresser, and now it's gone. I would appreciate it. Of course. I'll look into it immediately. Lottie, I have warned you too often about annoying our guests. If you disobey me again, I shall turn you out. And if I turn you out, there will be no place for you anywhere. You do understand, Lottie, don't you?
Ah, Miss Barlow. I'm afraid Lottie is nowhere to be found, but I will inquire about your locket first thing in the morning. Oh, thank you. Where is everybody? Most of the other guests have gone to services. Services on the 1st of February? Candlemas Eve. The night when the witches mock the rituals of the church. Are you all right, Miss Barlow? Yes, quite. Thank you. Good night. Good night, Miss Barlow. Thank you. 
Mm. Yummy. Delicious. Dick, have you got any idea what's happened to Nan? I'm sure she'll show up. She, she probably met a good-looking he-witch. And is bringing him along to the party. Only their broomstick blew a gasket. Well, it's not like Nan to be late for anything. Aren't you a bit worried about her? Oh, she'll be here. I'm sure she'll make it. Oh, it's probably her now. Well, you answer the door, and I'm going to put a record on for some dancing. All right. Hi, Dick. Bill. Well, what's the matter? Are you expecting somebody else? Oh, yes, Nan. Look, come in, come in. Well, Nan, didn't you hear yet? We made a date to meet here before she left for Whitewood. Well, she probably got held up. Look, look, give me your coat, huh? Ah, Nan was never late for anything in her life. Relax. Take it easy. Join the party. She'll be here. Dick. Dick, I haven't had a letter from Nan in over two weeks now. Well, she's probably been too busy working on her paper. No, no, there's something wrong, I know it. Look, will you do something for me? Mm -hmm. Ring up Whitewood, will you? Ask him, ask him if she's left. You serious? Yes, I am. Okay. Long distance. I'd like to speak with Miss Nan Barlow at the Ravens Inn, Whitewood. No, I, uh, I don't know the phone number. What? Didn't she give you the phone number? Oh, I know, but uh, that's my sister. They say there's no such place as the Ravens Inn. But that's crazy. She's staying there. Give me the police. She left in such a hurry, she must have forgotten to return it to you, Miss Russell. She seems such a nice girl, too. Wouldn't have thought she was the sort who'd forget to return a book. We cannot always judge by our first impressions, can we? I'm not usually wrong about the people I lend my books to. Well, perhaps you'll be more careful in future. Thank you for letting me have it. Remember me to your grandfather. Lottie. Get out of the way, you clumsy creature. Can I help you? Yes, we're from the sheriff's office. We had a call this evening. A missing person's report from some college kid named Nan Barlow. The party calling said that her last known whereabouts was the Raven's Inn. Nan Barlow, that's strange. Yes, I met her. When did you last see her? About two weeks ago, she came to my shop and, and borrowed this book. It's quite valuable, and so not hearing from her, I decided to come and get it. Mrs. Newless had it. May I? Yes. A treatise on devil worship. I must put this in the report. The peculiar things some of these college kids do nowadays. Well, thanks for your help. Come on, Charlie. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Well? The police sent a car out to the Raven's Inn. Man checked out two weeks ago. I don't get it. Well, neither do I. Look, these are Nan's books and papers. Go through them, see if you can find anything which might give us a lead. I'm going to pay a visit to a colleague of mine. Oh, Lord, 
of light. Accept the sacrifice. You weren't in. No, uh, no, I wasn't. Would you care to go in the study? Sit yourself down. Thanks. You take a drink? Ryan soda. Ice, please. So what's on your mind? A man's missing. And she has been since the day after she arrived at Whitewood. Really? You quite sure? That's what the police said. What are they doing about it? Carrying out a routine check? I, I don't suppose they can do much more until they've got something definite to go on. Well, I would have thought there was a very great deal more they could do. What? As far as they're concerned, she disappeared two weeks ago and no one in the village seems to know anything about it. What have you come see me for? I thought you might have some ideas. Why did you send her to Whitewood? Because it was the best place for her research. And you suggested she stay at the Raven's Inn. I'm sure, it's the only inn there is. With an unlisted phone number? The inn has its own clientele, Barlow. It doesn't need to advertise. How do you know it so well? Because I was born in Whitewood. I see. And you'd have every reason to believe she'd be perfectly safe in going there. I have no reason to suppose that she wouldn't be. Nan struck me as being perfectly capable of taking care of herself. Yeah, I grant you that, but why hasn't she come back or let us know? Look, Barlow, I can understand your anxiety, but I'm quite sure there's nothing for you to worry about. Nothing at all. She's probably got absorbed in the subject and gone off someplace. I wish that all my class had her application. Yeah, well, I'm going to find out where this application led her. I'm going to retrace every step Nan took. I'm either going to find Nan or know what happened to her. I can't stop you from going. No. I'm not afraid. Afraid? Why? If anything did happen to your sister and somebody else went along to try and find out about it. The same thing might happen to them? Possible. You seem to think something happened to my sister then. No, I just think you're jumping to conclusions, Barlow. Maybe, but uh, I shall find her. Professor Driscoll? Yes? I don't like to disturb you, but may I see you? Well, of course, please come in. Good luck in Whitewood. Thanks. I'm sorry, but did you say he was going to Whitewood? Yes, he is. Silly to be surprised, but uh, I've just come from Whitewood. Really? Quite a coincidence. My own family happens to come from Whitewood. As a matter of fact, I was born there. Yes, I know. Please sit down. Thank you. Do you care for a drink? No, thank you. I think you know my grandfather, the Reverend Russell. Russell? Oh, yes, of course I do. How long have you been living in Whitewood? Since my grandmother died a few weeks ago. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, now, how can I help you? I've come about a pupil of yours, Barlow, Nan Barlow. Yes? She came to Whitewood two weeks ago. I met her and liked her, and she told me that she was a student in one of your classes, that you recommended that she stay at the Raven's Inn. That's quite right, I did. Well, that's what I've come to see you about. On the day after she arrived, she disappeared. Oh? Later, the police came asking questions. Her family were worried. I thought you might have their address. And why do you want her family's address? Because I have something of hers I want to return. Well, you just leave it with me, and I'll make sure they get it safely. Well, I don't want to trouble you. If, if you just give me their address. As you wish. Her address is Dorchester Street, 2 2 Five. She lives with her brother. As a matter of fact, he's a colleague of mine. You just met him. He was leaving when you arrived. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got a lot of work to do. I'm rather a busy man at the moment. Of course. Thank you for your help. Not at all. I hope it achieves something. 
Well, you will remember me to your grandfather, won't you? Yes, of course. Goodbye. Goodbye, Miss Russell. Nan's locket, all right. As far as I know, it's unique. I gave it to her. Where did you get it? The servant at the inn gave it to me. It was strange. I don't think she wanted Mrs. Newless to know I had it. Mrs. Newless? Well, she runs the inn. Well, why did you come here, Miss, uh, Miss Russell? I found this. It's Professor Driscoll's notepaper. I found it in the pages of a book I lent your sister on her first evening in Whitewood. When she didn't return it, I went to the hotel. What was the book? An old book. A book about witchcraft. Do you believe in it, Miss Russell? I don't know. Sometimes I almost think I live with it. Live with it? It's an obsession of my grandfather's. Up till now, I didn't take him very seriously. He's an old man. But now I'm beginning to wonder if what he says isn't true. What does he say? That there's something evil about the village. That on certain nights, the inhabitants leave the streets, close their doors, and stay behind them. That on these nights, the dead come to life. Nights like Candlemas Eve? What do you know about Candlemas Eve? It's in one of Nan's books. I don't believe it. Things like this don't happen today. In Whitewood, I wonder. I'm going to Whitewood tomorrow after classes. I, I can give you a lift. Thank you, but I, I must get back. I can't leave my grandfather alone. He's blind. May I come and see you when I arrive? I'd, uh, I'd like to have a talk with him. Please do. It's the house next to the church. Goodbye. Right. I'll see you to the door. Whitewood? Yes. Would you take me along with you? It's a dark night for walking. You're the Reverend Russell's granddaughter, aren't you? Yes. How did you know? I know a great deal about Whitewood. Have you ever been there? None, then. Never seen you. To see me is a special privilege. It's reserved for a chosen few. What does that mean? We'll soon be at Whitewood now. This is as far as I go. You will... She is. Very pretty. A living descendant of those who were cursed. It somehow seems to make it better. Another day. And tomorrow. The witches. Which way to Wamport Road? Straight ahead, fork in the road, you see a sign, turn left. You heading for Whitewood? I am. Many people head this way? Not many. Is this the only way in and out of the town? In this direction, yep. 
You wouldn't remember by any chance a, a pretty girl in a convertible about a month ago? The Barlow girl. Read about her in the papers. Never seen her again. Told the police. Thanks. Could you tell me the way to Whitewood, please? Another one. Straight ahead, fork in the road, you see a sign, Warmport Road, turn left, takes you right in. But well, thanks. Let me warn you, young fella, they don't like strangers in Whitewood. Okay, fine, thanks very much. Good evening. Good evening. I'd like a room, please. The inn is closing. Well, I'll only be here a few days. But the inn is closing. When? In two days. Well, if you don't mind, I I'd like to stay until then. If you insist. And could I... Could I have the, uh, the same room my, my sister had? Still available, isn't it? Yes, it's available. Mrs. Lewis, you told the police that my sister checked out. You are mistaken, Mr. Barlow. I told them that on the morning of February 2nd, I went to her room and found it empty, her bed not slept in, her luggage and car gone, and her bill unpaid. Well, you can put the charges on mine. When was the last time you saw her? On the evening of February 1st. It was shortly before midnight. She'd been in the lobby here dancing with some of the guests. She seemed to be enjoying herself. Did any particular guest pay a, a special attention to her? And not that I noticed. Your sister kept very much to herself. You know why she came to Whitewood? It is not my habit to inquire into people's private business. Well, would the fact that she was, she was investigating witchcraft have antagonized anyone in the village? Hardly. There have been other students here, you know. Besides, your sister was a very agreeable and likable young woman. Well, have you any idea where she might have gone? None. Thank you. Now, may I see the room? As you wish. It is this way. If you should need anything and I am not at the desk, you have only to ring the bell. Thank you.
glad you've come. I saw your car outside the Ravens Inn earlier. I wondered what had happened to you. I've been talking with Mrs. Nullis, and then I, I took a walk around the village. Find out anything? Everyone here seems to be afraid of something. Then you don't think it's just my imagination? I don't know. Who's to say where imagination ends and truth begins? It's, it's nothing tangible. It's just the way they look at you. I felt it too. May I see the, uh, the book that Nan borrowed? Yes. I put a marker between the pages where she must have stopped reading. Just sit down and I'll tell my grandfather you're here. Thank you. I warned you, Lottie. Grandfather, this is Mr. Barlow. How do you do, sir? God be with you. Shall we sit where we'll be more comfortable? Here's your chair, Grandfather. You must be tired. I am really tired. I have little strength left these days for the fight. Won't you sit down? I'll make some coffee. The fight against what, Mr. Russell? Against the evil that besets this village. The people are creatures of the devil. They know no other god. You mean they worship Satan here, today? Satanism was never stronger than at the present time. For 200 years, the people of Whitewood have carried out rituals that mock the church's teaching. I find it very hard to believe, sir. I... Do not doubt, my son. It is real enough. For years, I struggled against the witches. Their master took away my sight. Seems incredible. I have tried to convince others. They, too, found it unbelievable. But I know these people have a pact with the devil to worship him and do his works. In return, he gives them eternal life. Eternal life? Aye. And to seal this bargain, they must sacrifice a young girl on two nights of the year. When are these nights, sir? Candlemas Eve. And the witch's Sabbath. Candlemas Eve, that's, that's February the 1st. And when is the witch's Sabbath? Tonight. Now you know why I came to see you. I had no idea it was so late. May I, may I have a rain check on the coffee? I'd like to have a few words with Miss Nulis again. Of course. Good night, sir. Good night. I'll see you to the door. God be with us. Well, Miss Russell, do you think that Nan's disappearance is connected in some way with these uh, witches' ceremonies? Yes. Well, I'd, uh, I'd like to come back later, if I may. Please do. And my name is Pat. Well, mine's Richard. I think I feel better now you're here. Well, I'm, I'm going to stay until I find out what's happened to Nan. Take care. Now drink your coffee before it gets cold. You must not see that young man again tonight. Why not? The devil comes in many disguises. I'll get you a spoon. Grandfather, there's a bird in the drawer. It's got an arrow through it. Go and look on the front door. Shut 
Shut the door. Shut the door quickly. Grandfather, what does it mean? Now listen, my darling. This is their sign. The witch's sign. What can we do? We must leave here. Leave here immediately. Barlow. Is that for me? Yes. Hello? Dick! Dick, I'm in terrible danger. We've got to leave Whitewood at once. Danger? But from what? We've got to leave... Ah! Pat! Dick, help me! Patricia! Pat! Mr. Russell, the witches, the witches have Patricia destroy them. Oh, Mr. Russell, how? The shadow of the cross. Use the cross. I adjure the old creatures of salt by the living God.
been waiting for you. Dick, these are the dead who killed Nan. Marlow. Settled with Mrs. Newis. 